Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Busco. Now, before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, today I'm doing the second of three wines from Corvetso. Today's one is a Prosecco Rosé from them. Just to make sure I'm being FTC compliant, this wine was provided to me for free. I have free reign to say and review the wine in any way I see fit. Not like I've had any problems, but I've been adding that little line for the, you'll see, you'll hear me say that almost exactly the same for the next few uh, reviews. Anyway, so last week I gave you a detailed background of the winery. If you missed that, feel free to watch the first part at your leisure. Today I'll give you a summary version. Nestled in the village of Sasalto, near the town of Treviso, they are between Veneto and the Dolomite Mountains. The winery has been around since 1960, started by the grandparents of the current owner, Giovanni Corvezzo. He likes to refer to himself as the happy farmer. Giovanni moved from a sustainable approach to organics in 2010, with certification coming in 2017. They began exploring becoming biodynamic in 2020. They have a total of 380 acres planted to Glera and Pinot Grigio, and their website states that they are the number one organic Prosecco winery in Italy. They may plant other grapes, but I didn't see any listed. Essentially, Giovanni, the happy farmer as he's known, which I already said, seems to be doing everything right with organics, recycling, renewable energy, renewable energy, etc. Side note for this wine, 2020 was the first year you can have a Prosecco Rosé. I know it's 2022, I'm more than halfway into 2022 when this video came out, but that's the vintage I got and is most likely what is out in the market. I'm sure 2021 will be out later this year. Okay, so let's see the stats for this wine. The 2020 Corvetso Prosecco Rosé, the suggested retail price is $13. It's the Prosecco DOC. It's a minimum of 85% Glera, 10 to 15% Pinot Nero. This may be a state fruit or purchase fruit, Either way, it's organic. The Silva is training system. Harvesting is mechanical. Vinification is soft, cold crushing and pressing. The second fermentation lasts 60 days via the Charmant method or the tank method. That's the vast majority of Prosecco that uses this method. The ABV or alcohol is 11.5%. It is called extra dry on the sweetness level. That means, uh, well, it has an RS of 12 grams per liter. And 12 grams per liter is the break point of between brute and extra dry, and a winemaker can choose either one. All right, well, let's get into this wine. All right, I gotta find the little tabby tab thingy. Whee! You excited about this one? I am. I haven't had a lot of. Prosecco rosés. I've had rosés from the area that are effectively Proseccos, but they couldn't call them Proseccos. But even then, I didn't have a lot of them. So this is one of the few that I've actually had. I'm excited for it. I like rosé sparkling wine. I just, if I had to choose between a rosé and a white, I would probably choose rosé most of the time. Alrighty. Boom, boom, boom. That's like sparklers in general. All right. Let's pop that on there. Pop that bad boy on there. Boom. Can you read it? There, you can read the label. Ta da. All right. So let's take a look at this wine. All right. So the bubbles, I know the camera can't really see much, but when you kind of look at it, I mean, it's got that good salmon color, like, as a good rosé should, and there's not much, not much else there. All right, let's little snifferoonie. I don't want to use the the Gary V phrases. I don't want him to like say I was stealing his. He he don't care. I can say sniffy sniff if I want to. I mean, we're buds, right, Gary? You still watch? My, you ever watch my show anymore? Probably not. Gary, if you watch my watch the show, 
leave a comment below. All right, so you got that kind of typical rose, uh, rose thing. Got a little strawberry going on here. A little bit of red apple. Go on the red, red fruit thing here. Of course, you can smell the bubbles. Smell, you know, smell the gas coming out, or the sensation of CO two. That's about it. Let's just taste this thing. You know, I joke with people that my favorite expression of Chardonnay, I usually say Chablis, but then I go, you know what? No, it's actually Champagne. And then I joke that my favorite expression of Pinot Noir is, or Pinot Nero in Italian or Italy, uh, kind of fluctuates between things like Sancerre, Tasmania, Oregon, you know, I mean, I've, I've had Pinot Noirs in like these kind of cooler climate things that are not Burgundy, you know, and that not cool climate in the United States. And trust me, I will happily crush a Pinot Noir from Burgundy if, if that's what I've got going on, whether it's my own wine or someone's, someone's pot or someone's, you know, pouring it. But there's something about Pinot Noir in a sparkling wine. And that's probably why, I, at least the Champagne Pinot Noir, Champagne Rosés, that's probably why I like them so much. Yeah, you probably saw me kind of look up because I saw like a little shadow thing and then I looked over here to see if there was anything behind me, like flying around. Anyway, it is summertime and things get in the house. Anyway, there's a little bit of like earthiness to this or non-fruit characteristic. Something a little more, something a little more interesting. It's got that red apple. It's got that strawberry, a little watermelon, just a touch of watermelon, not a lot. It actually tastes drier than the the other than the white prosecco. This kind of has a more of a drier finish, and I I equate that because the Pinot Noir is going to give you that kind of more earth-driven thing, or fl red floral type of thing, because a little bit of floral in there too, than a, a white grape. So, and it's not a lot. It's only fifteen percent. But it is enough to, I think, kind of add a little more complexity to things. I like it. I mean, it's $13. You know, Proseccos, I mean, there are some Proseccos out there, just straight up Prosecco DOC, that we're, we're, they're getting to the 17 and higher. But you really need to go into like the Val de Viadne type of stuff to really get into your 20-ish dollar uh, Proseccos. It tastes really good. You know, and, and here's the thing, uh, organic, so 100% organic grapes, they usually are more expensive grapes, but not always. And I don't know what, how much this is costing uh, Giovanni versus his old grapes, you know, how much the, how much goes into it. Um, it might actually be cheaper in the long run because you're putting what they call less inputs into it. But what increases organic sometimes is the fact you might have lower yields and more risk. So to make up for the loss of yield or just stuff like that and sometimes has a higher cost anyway i think the wine is really tasty and if you find it i think you should get it all right so that's going to do it for today's show uh if you enjoy what i'm doing here make sure to hit that like button subscribe and then tell your friends and then we'll see you next time <laughs>